guys, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and today I'm going to show you how to make bread machine English muffins. I am back at you with another bread machine recipe. I've got plenty others. Why don't you check the links in the description to see the other videos and blog posts for all these different bread machine recipes. So did you know that you can make English muffins in your bread machine? I didn't know either. I had just been buying English muffins at the store and they're like, what, two or three dollars for a six pack? I mean, they're good, but that's a pretty high price. So when I made this recipe, I decided to calculate the cost of all the ingredients and all together with my recipe, I'm only paying eight cents per muffin. And with the store-bought, you're paying 33 cents per muffin. Isn't that crazy? So this recipe also makes 14 or 15 muffins. So for less than half the price, you're getting like double the amount of muffins. It's amazing. And if you guys don't have a bread machine, I highly recommend you go find one. I got mine at a thrift store for like $6 and it has done me so well over these past five or six years that I've had it. And these muffins can be used for pretty much anything. You can toast them in the toaster oven. You can make your own copycat egg McMuffin sandwiches. You can put peanut butter or regular butter on them. I mean, the possibilities are just endless. So let me show you how they're made. So the first ingredients that we will add are one cup of warmed up milk and then a fourth cup of water. Your bread machine might say differently, but mine usually says to put the liquid ingredients in first and then everything else. Then I'm adding three tablespoons of olive oil and about one tablespoon of honey, one teaspoon of salt, then one egg. And then we'll add the flour. So I have a mixture of two cups of whole wheat flour and then one cup of all purpose. You can probably use all whole wheat flour or you can even use all of it as all-purpose flour. It really doesn't make a huge difference, just whatever you have on hand. And then last, I will add two teaspoons of active dry yeast. And now we'll put this in the bread machine. And now that this is in, we'll just close the lid. I've got a ton of different menu selections over here, but the one that I choose is the dough function, so number nine. Yours might have something different, but the dough function will go for about 90 minutes, so a minute and 30, an hour and 30 minutes on mine. I'm going to check back here in about five minutes just to see if I need to add any more water or flour. Okay, let's check on it real quick. So as you can see, it is quite wet. What you wanna be able to do is take your finger and poke it and have it not stick to your finger. So right now, it is sticking. So if that happens, just add maybe a tablespoon at a time of flour to see if that helps and just check it every minute or so and see if you need to add more flour. Okay, I ended up adding about four tablespoons of flour, so that should be okay, but like I said, just check on it every minute or so just to see if it needs more. All right, let's take a look here and it looks done. Um, looks pretty good. It's still a little bit sticky, but it'll be okay. We're gonna put it on a cutting board and kind of dust some flour on it, and it should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump this onto the cutting board. And I'm just gonna knead it a few times just to try to make it a little less sticky. I probably could have added another tablespoon or two of flour while it was in the bread machine, but it'll be okay. Then from here, I will take a rolling pin and I will roll it out nice and flat and even so that we can cut it into the muffin shapes. I'm pretty sure that once you guys try these homemade English muffins, you will not want to go back to the store-bought ever again. I mean, not only is it cheaper, oh my gosh, it, they taste so much better than the store-bought. So once you get it to a fairly even thickness all around, I just have an empty tuna can. So I just push down a little bit and then cut out a circular shape. And then I'm gonna set it just on a cookie sheet. And I usually get between 12 and 15 of these muffins. So if you think about it, a typical package of English muffins only has six. And 
this makes like 12 to 15. That is a huge cost savings. Now I could go to my local bread outlet store and buy them for 50 cents a package, but if I can't get out there, then this is a good option as well. Cause like at the typical stores, they're what, like two or three dollars for a package of six? Just crazy. So then once you have cut out all that you can, just knead it back up, roll it back out, and do it again. All right, so I was able to get 14 muffins, which is not bad. So next I'm going to cover this with a towel and let it rise for 30 minutes, and then I will come back and cook them. All right, these have risen just a little bit, so now I'm going to turn on the griddle so that we can cook them. So the thing about English muffins is that you don't cook them in the oven. You actually cook them on the stovetop or skillet, um, griddle really. So I have a griddle here that I'm cooking them on just because I can fit eight of them at a time. But if you just have like a pan, then you can cook them in the pan on the stove top. You just won't be able to cook as many at once. But I've got this on the lowest setting. So it's at around 275 degrees if you do it on the stove top in the pan. Just put it on um, lowish heat. And then we're going to let it cook for a minute or two on each on one side before flipping it to the other side. They really don't take that long, so you'll want to check the bottoms of them every so often. So like this right here is just about done on that side. So I might flip it just to get it to cook a little on the other side. You may have to flip them maybe once or twice just so they don't get burned. Because I know a lot of times when I've made these, the outsides will be nice and crispy, but the insides will still be a little bit soft. So you'll just want to kind of watch it. I don't mind mine being a little bit soft in the middle, but you can cook yours a little bit longer if you want it a little bit more muffiny on the inside. Okay, they feel pretty well done on the outside. So let me take them off. And then before I start the next batch, let me cut one open and see what it looks like. All right, let's just cut this open really quick and see how it looks. It really only took like two minutes total to cook these. And yeah, these actually look really good on the inside. They are soft, kind of like bread would be. But as you can see, I mean, it's fully cooked. It looks awesome. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other ones. And I'm not even using any cooking spray on this. I'm just placing these directly on the griddle and they flip and cook just fine without it. Man, aren't these just beautiful? So now that you've made them, you can cut them in half and you can toast them in the toaster oven. You can also turn these into coffee cut egg McMuffins. I've got a link in the description to my own recipe for my coffee cut egg McMuffins. You can put butter on them, you can put peanut butter. The possibilities are endless. So I've got the printable recipe down below in the description, so make sure you check that out if you want to print it for yourself. And if there are any other bread machine recipes you guys want me to make, just let me know. I've done tons of other recipes that you can find down below as well. I've done the uh, jalapeno cheese bread, I've done the cinnamon raisin bread, I've done cinnamon rolls, dinner rolls, breadsticks. So you tell me what you want and I will make it. And also be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified on whenever I post my grocery hauls, my recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you later.